All right, I have 6.30, so we will get our November 17th regular select board meeting underway. Um, let's see, we have with us, we have Daniel Harris, we have Heather Frost, we have Ken Bloom coming in, Mark Snow, Spencer Bristol, uh, Jeff Dunkley, Michael Root, Gene Carr, Wendy Harrison, Sandy Harris, that's going to be tricky. Um, I think that's what we have. All right, so now that we are back into Zoom meetings, um, everybody, if you could kindly mute yourself um, and only take it off mute if you need to speak so we can control some background noise. Um, unfortunately, here we are. This is not where I would like to be back to Zooming, but uh, that's what we're doing. Uh, I do apologize to the select board for sending that email out without consulting everybody, but given the governor's orders, I felt it was best if we go back to this type of meeting for the time being. So um, additions to the agenda, the only thing that I have is we have been asked by the newly appointed fire chief, Alex Dunkley, if he may join us um, for an additional update, if we could put that as number three under the department in committee reports. So moved. And moved. <laughs> Second. <laughs> moved and seconded. All those in favor. Um, and for the purposes of Zoom, we do have to do a roll call vote. So I apologize for that. Jean Carr. Second. <laughs> uh, and uh, we, we've done the motion. It's been seconded. We are now voting. I need oh, okay. a yay or oh, an I a. Oh, I get from, it. Okay. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. Michael Root. Yay. Sandy Harris. Yes. Jeff Dunkley. Aye. And Chris Parker. Aye as well. Uh, and we have also been joined by Brana. Sandy. Thank you. All right. Um, I may have messed up with the BDC. Um, I do not believe that I emailed him and told him that we would be going to Zoom. So I may have messed that up. Um, if so, we will put him on the next meeting. Uh, I do not see Mr. Emery here for a COVID update, but I do see Mark Snow. Mark, I'm gonna give the floor to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Emery was supposed to be here tonight, but uh, he's having problems logging on. So uh, he asked if I would uh, provide an update. Um, the update is, is that the COVID numbers are increasing uh, throughout Vermont. Uh, the governor has extended the uh, state of emergency order uh, through uh, midnight Tuesday, December 15th. Um, with the upcoming Thanksgiving holiday, there's concerns about family gatherings and gatherings in general for the holiday. Uh, it is uh, recommended that uh, families do not gather uh, with anyone outside of their household uh, for the holiday. Uh, like I said before, the numbers are really increasing. There is a spike and there is concerns uh, about the numbers. Um, it's pretty much what I have. I'm sure Dave had more. Uh, but this is last minute for me, so uh, I, I'm uh, open to questions if you have any. Any questions for Mark Snow? Um, seeing none. Mark, I appreciate you being here, uh, even given the short notice, and we've appreciated the updates. Unfortunately, um, I think we'll be hearing more updates as the meetings progress. Um, but we do appreciate everything that you've done to keep us informed. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And there's just one thing I did want to add. Sure. Uh, Dave did send an email to uh, key people personnel today asking for an update uh, to see if there was any needs. Uh, and everybody reported back that uh, things are, are uh, going as well as expected and uh, nothing is needed at this time. Great. Last chance. Anything for Mark? 
Seeing none. Mark, you are all set, sir. Thank you. Have a nice night. Um, I see that Chief Dunkley has joined us. Alex, the floor is yours, sir. Okay. Um, I think actually, I think Chief Emery is trying to get on. He probably did uh, the same thing I did. He was, he's probably trying to sign in under tomorrow night's link. Um, and uh, so I know he is planning on joining the meeting. Um, well, that's probably him texting me right now then. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I've got a I've got a brief fire department update for you guys. Um, we are nearing completion with the interviews for the uh, for the members for the uh, for the fire side. Uh, we're uh, we're going to start getting back to people uh, within the next week or two uh, re in regards to their status. Um, and uh, as a committee, we're, we're working on um, uh, just trying to figure out how that, uh, how that regrouping is going to look the way, uh, the way things have changed with, uh, with COVID and such. Um, we have a, uh, we have a, a Zoom meeting set up this Thursday with the uh, with the current active EMS providers, uh, and just to uh, be a time of introductions and uh, just to get all the EMS members up to date on the uh, uh, just where where things stand at this point. Um, I uh, I received a. Uh, um, uh, budget breakdown from from Cindy for the past five years. Uh, she gave me a, a pretty detailed report on that. Uh, so we're going to start looking at the budget more in depth on Thursday. Um, and I'm hoping to have uh, have a uh, draft budget proposal to the board by your uh, by your second meeting in December, and uh, be able to. The plan is to give that to you guys at at that point for consideration and, uh, and comments and, and such. Uh, and then the, uh, the other thing I wanted to bring forth tonight is uh, I've appointed uh, Spencer Bristol to the uh, position of assistant chief. Um, Spencer brings a diversity of knowledge and leadership to the department. Uh, he's a resident of Vernon and he's been here for about four years. Uh, he owns his own landscaping business. Prior to owning his own business, he was employed at Entergy, and uh, during his course of employment there, he was involved with various departments within the plant, uh, including, but not limited to, uh, facilities lead, facilities worker, uh, security coordinator, security training supervisor, uh, security training instructor, uh, security officer, fire brigade, and uh, confined space rescue. Uh, other experiences besides his work was uh, he was a police officer in Northfield and Bernardston. Uh, he served as a captain on the Bernardston Fire Department. Uh, he was a firefighter and EMS provider for the for the town of Northfield, and uh, he has a long list of specialized trainings that are uh, pertinent to the services we provide. Um, I'm confident that uh, Spencer's education is practical experience and his, his training and leadership abilities will uh, make him a valued asset to this town and, and to the department. And uh, I'm honored to have him here uh, to assist me with the rebuilding of this department. And I'm thankful for his commitment to provide the best emergency response services to our community that we possibly can. So I just wanted to bring that forth to you guys and just keep everybody kind of up to date as to where we're at and, uh, Spencer's joined us tonight, and if the board had any questions for, for him, I'd welcome you guys to, to query him. Sure. Uh, thank you, Alex. And uh, I believe the 9931, is that you, Chief Emery? Maybe. I see somebody's trying to connect with audio here.
It's doing a happy dance. Yeah. <laughs> He's muted. <laughs> 9931 is muted. We got him trying to come in here. How about now? I got you now, Chief. All right. I, I thought we're getting some feedback. Yep, hold on. How about now? Nope. There. Can, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Um, so I don't know if you heard uh, everything that we were just informed of from Alex. It was uh, great to hear from him. And before the board um, addressed the Spencer, I didn't know if there was anything that you would like to add uh, to that nomination or to follow up on anything that Alex has said. No, I, I did pick up part of it. Uh, however, just to not to reiterate everything he said, but the committee uh, also interviewed uh, Spencer as we did the chief and because we felt it's important for the chief to make that selection uh, he asked us to do the interview and make a recommendation to him and once again the committee in its entirety uh, voted in favor of, of supporting uh, Mr. Bristol for assistant chief. Great. Awesome so uh, Spencer this is great news. We have been very excited to see the progress down there. Um, uh, certainly with the appointment of Alex at our last meeting and now you, um, it certainly feels like that fire department is headed in a fantastic direction. Um, we're excited to see this, excited to see you guys working together. Obviously COVID is not going to help anything in the uh, trying to rebuild a department and training and all of those things that we'll have to try and figure out. Uh, but I am glad that we're starting to fill those roles with very educated professional people that are ready to go. Um, so with that, welcome, sir. And uh, we appreciate you being here. I'm going to ask Sandy Harris if you have anything for Mr. Bristol. No, just welcome on board. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Dunkley. No, oh, no questions. Uh, appreciate your service to our town, Spencer. Thank you. Ms. Carr. No questions, just thank you for giving to the town. Thank you. And Mr. Root. No questions, but glad to have you. Can't wait to see what you and Alex do. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, Spencer, do you have anything that you'd like to say? Otherwise, we will uh, get you and Alex out of here. Uh, no, I just look forward to it. Thank you. Great. Awesome. Well, welcome aboard, and, and we're very excited, so thank you. Um, Alex, did you have anything further? No, I don't think so. I, I, um, we had, I had talked to you earlier about switching out the locks and stuff. I, Dix is closed until uh the end of the month so once he opens back up we'll we'll get that taken care of and and uh get some new locks put on the station but, okay sounds yeah. good and i i believe i saw um the trucks were being inspected today is that correct yep they had uh they took the tanker up that was uh that passed they brought that back and they're working on a couple of minor things with uh with engine three so they, uh, they kept that at the garage tonight, so. Great, so things are progressing, that's awesome news. Things are, things are progressing. That's Perfect, well thank you guys for joining us. Spencer again, thank you very much and uh, we'll look forward to being in touch uh, moving forward here. Sounds good, thank you guys. Thanks, have a good night. Uh, Chief Emery, we did get an update from Mr. Snow. Um, it was, he, he admittedly said it was a little last minute. So um, I would ask if you would like to add anything. We did obviously cover the washing your hands, cover your face, all of that happy stuff that has been beat into our heads since March. But um, given all of the new changes, do you have anything further to update? Well, you know, Mark and I are in communications, and um, I know that uh, whatever he gave for a report was accurate, uh, as we talked earlier. Uh, however, I will just probably reiterate, because I don't think we can say it too many times, is that uh, Vermont, unfortunately, the last few 
weeks I've stood in front of you and said things were status quo and Vermont was doing well. Well, sadly, I'm not reporting that today. Uh, it is Vermont's not doing well at all. Uh, we've seen the highest cases in the last three days uh, that were higher than we've ever had. However, the good news is uh, having the experience from March, uh, Vermont has got a good handle on what's going on. And still the numbers, again, are lower than the rest of the country, but that doesn't, that doesn't take us out of the woods. Um, the governor's conference today, as most of you could have probably seen, is that uh, he's limiting uh, a bunch of stuff However, nothing's really being closed totally, um, but they're hoping uh, that they're going to limit a lot of contact. And one of the ones that's probably the most important is uh, with Thanksgiving coming up, they're even asking family members, if you don't live in the same household, um, to try to limit and probably not have any contact uh, at all. However, if you have daily contact and you are people coming in every single day, uh, that's part of your family and they spend a great deal of your time there, uh, I would consider them to be part of, of the immediate family. Um, the restaurants are still opened, um, so that's going to stay happening. Uh, the principal, uh, Mary Ross, uh, sent a report today and they're planning, as you probably all know, that they're planning on uh, opening at the second semester uh, with four days of school, four days of in-person in, in school. However, they also are planning as of today, uh, the other side of it is going total virtual uh, as they were back in the end of last year. So, I think things are pretty much up in the air. Um, and again, I, we can't say it enough, the masks, the washing your hands and social distancing are of utmost importance right now. Um, they saw a spike because of the gatherings during um, Halloween. Uh, they're predicting a spike will continue after elections because there were so many people. However, I can tell you that Vernon did an excellent job. Uh, and Thanksgiving, they're predicting uh, another one. So I don't see it getting better in the next few weeks. And there's two weeks in between that seem to be there's not a relief that's in sight. The only thing that we have in sight that's probably the best thing is they unveiled another uh, antivirus today, uh, serum that is supposed to be coming on the market very soon. And they were talking weeks. Um, but again, it's going to take months for everyone to get, uh, get it as well as them produce it and, uh, and they'll make a decision who uh, will be first. And there's obviously emergency personnel and vulnerable populations that would probably be uh, higher on the list. They are strongly encouraging testing. If you have been in fact uh, out in the last few weeks uh, and haven't you know, been totally good with everything you're supposed to do, they are suggesting that uh, you get tested. Uh, they're opening up more test sites. Brattleboro site is open. Um, and you can go on uh, emergency management department of health and see where all the sites are coming up. Testing and tracking are the two key things for us right now. And uh, in that, uh, I've taken enough of your time. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Chief. Uh, any questions from the board for Mr. Emery? Seeing none. Thank you, sir, for being here. Okay, thanks. Uh, let's see. We have RT who has joined us now that I've actually informed him of where we're going to be tonight and how he can join us. So uh, my apologies for that. And we uh, screwed it up at the last meeting, but here you are, here we are. So uh, the floor is yours, sir. Hi, thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, thank you, for Chris, for forwarding me the uh, meeting URL. So I'm, I'm here on behalf of SEVED, Southeast Vermont Economic Development Strategies. Some of you might know um, SEVED has been around since 2007. Um, and, has, and, and it's been their endeavor to take on 
the shared economic challenges we face as a region. Um, SEVIDS was founded as an affiliate to the BDCC, the Brown Rural Development Credit Corporation, and tries to take a proactive long-term approach to economic development. Um, improving wages, attracting and keeping people in the region and fostering healthy regional jobs um, are all critical. And it's beyond the capacity of you know, any single community to um, really affect these type of things. So SEVIDS works from a, a regional perspective. Um, and you know, we come to each town um, as we've done in the past here in Vernon um, and, and request um, some municipal funding. We go to all 27 towns that we serve. Um, last year in 2020, 80 per, 82 percent of the Wyndham residents supported the work that we do. We use municipal funding in, in, in really three key ways. Um, and if you, if you live in the world of grants, which some of you do, working for, working for and with a municipality, you know, a lot, a lot of times grants need a match. And some of our funding comes from either state or federal resources. And the municipal funding really helps us leverage that match. So for example, last year in fiscal year 20, we administered $635,000 um, in, in federal and state funding to help further our mission and the work that we do, which is, again, it's really essentially to try to help build a more vibrant economy here in Southern Vermont. Um, so just a few highlights. Um, I, I know a good number of you have, have uh, are familiar with the work that we do, but in this past year, um, three three Vernon-based businesses relieved direct what we call liaison support during the March and April timeframe um, from BDCC, and that's that was really to help folks understand how to access the federal and state relief programs um, for economic injury. Um, Thirteen Vernon businesses received. Um, over $530,000 from the Paycheck Protection Program. Um, and, and, and as you probably know, the, those funds, if they were under $150,000, um, are now um, forgivable. Um, and those firms, those companies alone employ 48 people. Um, three additional firms with 166 employees received um, larger loans, for, so from 150 to uh, 300,000 from the Paycheck Protection Program. Um, we've had businesses come through our startup assistance programs. Um, you know, we have programs in the high schools, the Young Professionals Program, the Internship Program. We still conduct regional uh, resiliency webinars. I facilitate a, a, we call it the BURP webinar, the Business Economy resiliency webinar to help businesses um, understand how to pivot and how to access additional resources. Um, so I won't, I, I, I'm happy to entertain some questions, but um, Chris, I think you have the letter with our funding requests. We would love to understand what we need to do to formally uh, be um, uh, hopefully a separate article um, on the town meeting warning. In the past, we've been grouped together with uh, uh, our human service organizations. Um, economic development is, is not quite a human service organization. So, you know, we would, we would love the opportunity to speak before the town to present the work that we do and, and make a request to the town for um, municipal support. Yes, so Sarah did re-forward that to me today, um, and we'll take Great. a look at that. And uh, should uh, should I'll try and be in touch by the end of the week if we need anything else from you um, to make sure okay. that that goes smoothly. If that works for you, that's fantastic. We really appreciate the opportunity to not only speak to you folks here tonight, but also to potentially speak to the, the folks in the town. Okay. Uh, any questions from the board or audience members for RT? Verana. I'm, um, 
I'm real. I'm here tonight to support RT because I represent Vernon on the Wyndham County Economic Development Program Council, um, and also I represent Vernon on the Deerfield Valley Communication Union District, and we um, are both of those are our support. Well, the D, the DV Fiber, the Communications Union District has gotten some funding from BDCC and it's, it's for economic development and it's, it eventually Vernon will be um, getting the benefits of that project in that we will be offering uh, fiber optics to all households and um, businesses in the region, in the, in the county. And I was really glad to hear RT mentioned the town, how it has directly benefited, which is new uh, information. And that's all I want to say. Uh, is we're like, just, I think we're, 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 we're trying to we're trying to get we're, we're trying to get better at our uh, <laughs> the way we articulate the work we do. So but thank you for that. Yeah. Thank you, Brana. Anybody else? Seeing none, RT, thank you very much for joining us tonight, and I will be in touch as soon as I possibly can with you, sir. Thank you, Chris. It was good seeing you and good seeing everyone else. Take care. Be healthy. Likewise. Have a good night. You too. Um, thank you. Before we go into the approval of minutes, I uh, completely spaced it. We have Wendy Harrison with us this evening, who has agreed to uh, be the interim town administrator for us. And uh, I cannot even begin to express the amount of relief that I got on Monday when all of the town administrator emails and the fire chief emails stopped coming to my email. Uh, so Monday was a good day and I appreciated it. Welcome uh, and thank you for stepping in to help us out during this time. Are you trying to unmute Wendy? There you yeah. are. Yes, um, and thank you. I'm I'm happy to be here. All right, awesome. Uh, let's see, approval of minutes. Um, Mary Lynn did ask for some corrections on the November fourth when we get to that. So um, we will need to split those into two. If we could look at the October 29th special meeting minutes, please. Mr. Chair, I move that we accept the October 29th special meeting minutes as written. Can I get a second? Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor of accepting the October 29th meeting minutes. Uh, oh, hold on. We have to do this this way. Uh, Jeff, yay or nay? Yay. Gene? Yay. Michael? Yay. Sandy? Yay. Yay. And Chris, yay. All right, those ones are all set. Next on November 4th, uh, Mary Lynn's correction was that she was in person. She was not there via Zoom. She's asked us to make that correction. Any other corrections to the November 4th regular select board meeting? If not, I would take a motion to accept with corrections. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Jeff, yay or nay? Yay. Gene? Yay. Michael? Yay. Sandy? Yay. Chris, yay. Um, all right, now we will go on to bills and warrants, please. I move that we approve payment of the following warrant 10t accounts payable $290,490.74 44s payroll $7,233.97 45s payroll $6,658.65 second moved and seconded michael yay or nay Yay. Jeff. Yay. Gene. 
Yay. Sandy? Yay. Chris? Yay. All right. Um, next, we have in your packet was a letter in regards to the Renault gravel pit at 283 Fort Bridgman Road. Um, I did forward this around to the board and wanted to make sure that there was a chance for discussion prior to that being signed and moved forward. Um, anybody from the select board comments, questions, concerns about that, please. Have you heard anything from any of the abutters or public on this? I have not. Um, with that being said, I do recall uh, this had to have been back in August um that maggie had said a resident from laurel ledges had expressed some concern in regards to this um, right. but that was the extent of the information that i received on that and there's been no further follow-up sandy jeff michael have anything no no um, is there any objection to us answering these questions and returning this letter with a signature? No, I think it's fine. I was just wondering how you plan on answering those questions. Uh, well, we can certainly do that together. Um, fire protection, yes, no, municipality does not provide this service. Uh, we do have fire protection. We will answer that one yes, correct? Yeah. Are we trained to provide fire protection for what they're doing? Um, I mean, it, it's, I, I would have to answer yes to that. And we do still have Alex Dunkley here. Um, I am not certain that we can ask too many questions of him given his employer. Right. We, we have other gravel pits in town also, so True. I'm not sure why it's different on that terms. Okay. It, it says to provide without unreasonable burdens to the above project. I don't think it would have been an unreasonable burden. Yeah, I just didn't want to say, yes, we provide something that we can't provide. Right. Um, police protection. Um, should that be municipality does not provide this or because we're contracted, we do? Well, we do at the moment. <laughs> I would say they need to provide their own if they need it. Sandy, Jeff? Well, we provide part-time. Would it be an unreasonable burden? So would they be spending more time patrolling because of this or what? Um, I do not believe so. And because they are contracted, if Renault ever needed to utilize them for traffic control or whatever, they would have to contract them separately would be my understanding of that. Right. I think that would be the case for any situation in town though. I feel like I feel like these are just asking if your community has these services because some right. towns do not. Yep. Do not have any police or whatever. You know, I, I feel like it's in more of a general mode that you actually have these services available to the town. Not that and they're asking for special sure. services. And because, because that is funded by uh, the residents, that is a it is offered at, through the municipality, correct? I'm gonna answer yes on this one. Uh, same with rescue, we hold a contract with rescue, so that should be fine. Um, road maintenance, that is a state highway, so that would be a municipality does not provide the service to that. Is that how I should be answering that one? Yep. Yes. Uh, and solid waste disposal, um, again, we provide that for residents not for businesses so that would 
Correct. We all in agreement with that. Mm -hmm. um, would the deficiencies occur without this project? If the deficiencies are common to many projects, um, yes. Anybody? So yes, they would. It's the same no matter what. So on B, is this yes or no? Yes. Right. And on C, yes or no? No. Everybody agree? Right. Yes. I agree. And on D, yes or no? Yes. Are you available? Because it's going to be your name on it. <laughs> Thanks, thanks, Michael. I'm actually signing oh, yours here. How would you like to answer that? <laughs> All right, I will sign that and drop that off tomorrow. Great. Um, do we need a vote on that, Sandy? I'd... We should. Just okay. To um, so I'm looking for a motion to sign off on the um, Act 250 Municipal Impact Questionnaire for the Renault Gravel Quarry on 283 Fort Bridgman Road. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, Jeff? Aye. Michael? Yes. Sandy? Yes. Jean? Aye. Chris? Yes. Um, next, I need to call Cindy. Hopefully I have enough cell service to do this. And of course I do not. Oh, here we go. Hello. Hi, Cindy, it's Chris and we are live on Zoom. Um, so if you could, uh, just to make sure that we are staying nice and clean, if you could just state your name, please. Dow Treasurer. Can everybody hear Cindy? Yes. Yes? All right. Um, Cindy, you had requested to join us tonight with some information or a request from the school. Could you give us some more information, please? It, is there any reason that we cannot or should not do that? from the board Sandy I couldn't understand hardly anything she said so. okay um, did is that a general problem for everybody yes, All right. yes. All right. so I, I will try and reiterate I'm sorry that um, we'll have to come up with a better way to do this um, Cindy is saying that the elementary schools 
finances have uh, essentially been depleted by a tuition bill that came in for over $1 million. They have requested that we make our January 14th payment, um, that we would make that payment early so that they could have the funds to continue to operate and pay their expenses. Otherwise, they would have to attempt to go through People's Bank and uh, secure funding that way, which would come with interest and in all of that stuff. So essentially, they have asked if we could pay them a little bit early to help them float by on this. So moved. They are not asking for the full amount, so the remainder of that would still be paid on the 14th of January. Is that correct? Okay. Is this uh, uh, going to be a reoccurring instance? Or is this a one-time deal? Uh, Jeff has asked if this is going to be a recurring thing or if this is looking to be a one-time issue. Um, according to her conversation, it would just be a one-time deal given the situation that we're currently in. Okay, so moved. Who is the tuition bill for? Is it the high school kids or? Uh, yes, yes. The high school. Okay. And this this is from the district or the state or? I apologize. I don't understand. They can't. They can't. Our students go to. Just a couple words at the end. If you can just summarize, I'd appreciate it, Chris. Yep. So she said that the tuition bill came in um, like it usually does, and they went ahead and paid it. Um, last year, they did wait to pay it until those uh, funds were appropriated. And this year, it sounds like it was more of an oversight. They were just paying bills and then learned afterwards that there was not going to be enough funds there to continue moving. Um, is that about sum that up, Cindy? Yes, it Yeah. Um, so, I mean, the reality is, is what? It's uh, the 17th. So they're looking for their payment two months early. Okay. okay. And only, only a part of it. Only you, a portion of you it. You said yes. the, uh, so what is the total bill that they would be getting in January if we didn't do this? Like 1800000 million and something like that. 1800000 So they're essentially asking for less than half of that. So they're asking for 700, I'm sorry, one more time. 703895. Um, any Chair, further? Yep. I move that we advance the school the 703895 with the balance due um, January 14th. I have a motion from Ms. Harris to appropriate the funds that have been requested. Second. Moved and seconded by Mr. Root. Uh, all those in favor, Jeff? Nay. Jean? Yay. Michael? Yay. Sandy? Yes. Chris? Yes. Um, Cindy, that one will be all set. I do have a few other questions for you about other agenda items. If you are able to um, give me a couple of quick answers, I shouldn't have to keep you around for too long. Um, the first being, have we received any communication back about uh, snow plowing? Have not heard anything else. 
Okay. Um, I'll follow up with uh, Mary Lynn tomorrow and see if we can further that conversation. Uh, and then I thought I had one more question for you here. Oh, um, later this evening, we are going to hear from um, Dan Harris about replacing, or I'm sorry, repairing the Onyx roof for the historical building down here. Um, is there, could we be utilizing the emergency building repairs fund for that rather yes. than, yes? Okay, and that is all that I had for questions. Does anybody else have anything for Cindy before we let her go? Seeing none, Cindy, do you have anything else for us? Awesome, thank you very much. Have a good night. All right. Next on the agenda, we have Lister's reports. Uh, the report of errors and omissions. I do not see anybody from the Lister's office here with us this evening. That's a statutory action. Okay. And I move that we approve the Lister's report of errors and omissions. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Moved and seconded by Mr. Dunkley to um, approve the errors and omissions that have been submitted from the listers. All those in favor? Gene. Yay. Michael? Yay. Jeff? Aye. Sandy? Yes. And Chris, yes. Next on the agenda, we have into old business. Um, we can go ahead and group both of these together for uh, the recycling and the pay as you throw. Um, I've had a conversation with Wendy about this and also spoken to uh, Triple T and a couple of places about stickers and there's a lot of information that's bouncing around that I think needs to be tidied up a little bit. Um, the information we received tonight is that there is still some uh, enough time that we don't need to be stressed out about ordering bags should we choose to stay in that direction. Um, so I would be asking for a motion to task Wendy to continue to dig into this a little bit deeper, organize it, and uh, get the appropriate information for our next select board meeting. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded by Mr. Dunkley. All those in favor, Gene? Aye. Michael? Aye. Jeff? Aye. Sandy? Aye. Chris? Aye. Um, and then we are on to the consideration of the Onyx roof repair estimate by Dan Harris in the amount of $750. Um, we are joined here this evening by Heather Frost and we have um, Harris Builders with us as well should there be any questions for them. Um, they, are, they are the only um, estimate that we did get back and we are thankful that they did and that they are also going to be able to look at the project inside next year. So um, thank you gentlemen for coming out and looking at that and responding not just this time, but every time that we've reached out looking for your expertise on some of these buildings. So we appreciate it. Um, is there anything that stands out about that roof that we should know? Is it um, still quite a bit of life left in there? Is there anything that we might want to be looking at or planning ahead prior to spending the $750? Uh, Chris, thank you. Um, there is the roof has great lines to it. There's just a lot of holes in the roof. Um, uh, that somebody has put a lot of screws into that roof. And I sent a couple pictures to you and um, Heather. Um, if you zoom in, there's, there's a few places where screws are missing. That may be um, where we're guessing the water's coming in. Um, but pretty much, it's my opinion that all the screws need to be replaced. I'm not sure how old that roof is. Um, but most of the screws are, are, are very rusty and the, and the rubber grommets are pretty, pretty much dried out. 
Um, I'm not sure why until I get into it. You've got insulation coming out at the eaves um, to the outside of the building, which I'm not sure how that can happen again until I get into it. And also, when you look at the picture, um, there's there's some cross timbers that the roofing is screwed into, um, and they're, I don't know, four or five feet apart. But then when you get to your seams where the roofing overlaps itself, uh, it's screwed like every 12 to 14 inches, and I'm not sure what they're screwed, screwed into. Um, there technically shouldn't be anything there. So unless they use a special lap seam sealing screw, uh, most likely they just use a regular roofing screw, and that may have loosened up. So the challenge is the challenge will be to find some oversized screws, two inches long, two and a half inches long, and replace all the uh, all the screws. Um, I mean, I don't see any gaping holes where people are chiseled into it. It looks like it's not a heated building, so um, it looks pretty good as far as that goes. I think it just needs new screws or a lot of flex seal. <laughs> Um, now, we, you guys were down there over the summer and you were looking at the insulation that is falling from the um, ceiling. I know Heather had reached out about that and that's been a, that's been a concern as well. Um, I'm just curious when you get into this project and, and you're questioning the insulation that's coming out from the base of the roof now, um, would it should these two projects be grouped together? Is this going to run into one giant project, I guess is my question. Uh, if you were going to replace the roof with new roofing, then I would say yes, definitely. Um, the first thing I want to do is actually pull off a section of the roof and see what's underneath it. Um, um, and that will tell me what's going on with the insulation. Uh, my guess is you've had some water invasion in a few areas. And I don't think you need to replace all the insulation on the roof. Um, I guess the other concern was some rodents might have um, pulled some insulation around. But I, again, correct me if I'm wrong, I, I don't believe the building's heated, correct? No, it's not. Um, so the insulation is pretty much just to prevent condensation from getting onto the, um, the atoms below. So I, I, I wouldn't think it would be a high priority. I mean, I think we could patch it and fix what's there. Um, if, if we're gonna put a new roof on, then yeah, that would be make sense, but. Okay. All right. um, any questions from the board, Gene? No. Michael? No, thank you. Jeff? No, I don't. Sandy? Up. Oh, yep, never mind. We don't wanna <laughs> hear from you on this one. <laughs> um, gotcha. All right, so I would be looking for a motion that we authorize payment um, using the emergency building repairs fund to have the leaking roof on the Onyx building repaired. By Harris Builders? By Harris Builders, yes. Yeah. So moved. <laughs> I got that. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, Gene? Aye. Michael. Aye. Jeff. Aye. Sandy. Abstain. One abstention. And Chris, yay. Gentlemen, thank you very much. You're all set. Uh, get to work and send us a bill. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Appreciate you being here. All right. Um, snow clearing at the town hall. We just spoke to the town treasurer. Um, who was kind enough to type up a letter requesting some help with the snow removal. Um, we have not heard back from anybody other than one person who followed up with Mary Lynn Sherlin. So I will reach out to her in hopes that we do not get three feet of snow prior to our next meeting. Um, and we'll just have to watch the weather and see what happens, but we will continue to work uh, uh, forward on that one. So. We have two up here, so we're good. Okay, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. With that, public partic participation on non-agenda items only. Seeing none. Town admin report, please. 
Okay, I'll, I will be quick. Um, I was glad to start in a week when I could actually be at the office. Um, that was helpful. It was great to meet the town hall staff. Everybody was um, super friendly and super helpful. Um, I'll be working remotely um, just to comply with governor's uh, orders. Um, starting to gather information for the town report. I got a lot of budget information from the treasurer. I'll be um, looking to receive the final reports as they are approved by you folks. Obviously did the solid, solid waste and recycling um, initial uh, information gathering. And I'll, sorry that was, that you received it so late. Hopefully you had a chance to read it um, tonight. And um, that's about it. I, I, my next, um, other than the report, is I want to get out and meet the remote staff to the extent that I can. Um, so that I hate meeting people through Zoom. It's just, it's not a fun way to work, but it's, it's what we have. So it's nice to meet y'all. Awesome. Well, we're glad to have you. So thank you. Yes. Thank you. Um, Happy to be here. And call me if something's urgent, give me a call. That's okay. the best way to uh, upcoming meetings, we have a, another select board budget meeting tomorrow night. Uh, that will be at 6.30 in Zoom land. Our next regular select board meeting will be Tuesday, December 1st. And the next budget meeting will be Wednesday, December 2nd. If there is nothing else, I would take a motion to adjourn. So Second. I'm all jump so excitedly. Huh? Second. Second. <laughs> We're awake now. <laughs> Moved and seconded. All those in favor, say aye. Michael. Aye. aye. Sandy. Aye. Jean. Aye. Jeff. Aye, aye. Chris, <laughs> aye. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you. Thank Thanks. You.